just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Good morning, Patriots, family and friends. How y'all doing today? It's a Saturday. Today is, checking just to make sure I didn't oversleep a day. Yep. Today is 13 April, year of our Lord, 2024. And uh, it's a Saturday. Praise God. I got gorgeous weather here. I just wish it'd warm up just a touch. But uh, yeah, things are good, folks. Things are awesome. And uh, I hope you guys are doing good. Um, it's very interesting sometimes when you, like normally, I'm always listening, I'm always paying attention, and I'm hearing things that, uh, listening to people, and um, it, it's, it's, I learned something again this morning. Good morning, Miss Dot. Good morning, Miss Cleo. Good morning, Landon. How you doing this morning? Welcome. Um. Oh, if you guys, if any of you that are on YouTube, if you go into, I'm guessing that it's posted in the remarks. I don't know exactly where it ended up. I posted it under community, but uh, the link to our Discord page should be in there. And um, I posted that and uh, I tried to post it anywhere I could. I went on to Facebook and I posted it in the in the comments on there, and um, so we're going to try and be doing that so that it's it's locked in to the show itself um, instead of having to have um, Naomi uh, keep trying to post it for everybody. So if you do guys do see it, just let me know. Just take a look at the comments and let me know that it's there, and then uh, that way we know we're we're doing the right thing. <laughs> um. But um, for those of you that live in the Midwest and, and, and more toward the back east, kind of down the tornado alley, if you will, um, and, and storm shelters are a, a, uh, something that's just part of life because of the, the storms that hit, right? And I learned something this morning that was interesting. Um, yeah, being a carpenter and being a, a, a construction person and everything, um, I'm used to nail guns. I'm used to all kinds. I know guys that, that modify their nail guns that uh, make it more productive. It doesn't make it damaging. It just makes it a better uh, piece of equipment. And I learned this morning that when they're building storm shelters, that they are not allowed to use nail guns. They have actually proven that uh, driving a nail by hand um, driving it, just, you know, using a hammer, you know, the old fashioned way, just pounding it into the wood actually causes a more secure connection between the two pieces of wood. And, um, it, it locks them together tighter. And, and so they're not, you know, any storm shelter that's going to be certified is not allowed to be, um, built with nail guns. So, um, I just thought that was really interesting, but, uh, I was thinking about, you know, when, when we build things, when, when I build stuff and, uh, I, uh, I pull my nail gun out and, and, 
and use it. And then I started thinking about that. And it's like, well, does the structure have to be strong or, you know, and, um, look for the discord link under the channels community tab. Yeah. On, on, um, on discord under the community tab for, uh, God's signpost, you should see it there. Good morning, Rebecca. Nice to see you again. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was interesting how doing the exact same thing, it's got the same purpose. You, you're going to drive a nail, whether it's by hand or if it's by, uh, by a nail gun, you have the same intention, you have the same purpose, but it's just approaching it from a different direction. Um, and, and in doing so, you cause a different type of connection. So. Um, I just, you know, like I say, I just found that interesting this morning. I found it, uh, kind of different. So, um, especially when you, when you think about that, that Jesus was nailed to the cross, um, that they actually drove the nail through his arms and his feet. And, uh, so it's, it was a, a permanent connection you know, until it wasn't, until they took him down. But uh, um, there's some other interesting things about that, too, that I'll get into today. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, good morning, good morning, Kylie, how you doing? Good morning, Gina, how you doing this morning? Good to see you. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's more of a solid um, connection. We're creating a solid connection here um albeit not using nails we are um building something that is great we're building something that is better uh for all of us and um i'm doing good i'm um yeah i'm doing good i got almost almost seven hours of sleep last night I got I got more than six. At least that's what all the all like electronics say. But uh, doing good and blessed, truly blessed. Um, I uh, I got a couple of things I I need to ask of you guys for me, if you would. Um, don't 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 be reaching for your wallets. Don't worry about running to lock them up in the safe or anything. I ain't asking that way. I'm asking for prayer. Um, we, for those of you who, I, I don't know who here all follows, you know, different things or whatever, but, uh, um, I'm going to get into something else also. I need to be asking prayer for some people and, um, and, and we really need to be praying actually on two different fronts for this. I have so much raw ground beef. All right, Landon. Um, you come in here like that once before and, uh, you need to, uh, you know, uh, I thought you'd learn the first time. Um, don't be disrupting anything because you will be escorted to the door. You know that. And I really don't like banning anybody permanently, but we'll have to do that if you can't correct yourself. Okay, there is an order of decency and, and uh, decorum that we utilize here, and, and that's respecting everybody else, so um, you can kind of keep your remarks to yourself. Okay, so in fact, you know what, here, let me, let me help you. I'm going to start you out on the right path there, and we're just going to do like that. Okay, there we go. So, um... Yeah, it's always time to drink water, Michael. It's always time to drink. If you ain't drinking one ounce of water per pound of weight, no, it's a half an ounce of water per pound of weight every day. You need to do that the whole day. Okay? Through the whole day. That means I've got to drink about uh, 100 ounces of water a day, which... Actually, if I did that, I would be actually drinking less water than I normally do. Um, but, uh, yeah, 
because your body your body needs that it's it's um kind of like flushing your toilet you need that water to to get everything cleaned out good morning lissa how you doing this morning good morning dakota um so as everybody's coming in let's um let's get this thing cranked off the right way let's take it before the lord folks and and let's get it prayed up and then uh, we'll get the flag salute in and then get into our study for the day Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord God, for your grace. I thank you, Father, for your love. Father, I just thank you for your son, Jesus, who shed his blood for us on the cross, who gave us a, a way out um, when we're locked into an escape room, Lord, in, of life, and we don't know uh, the exact path out of that room. You sent Jesus to show us where the triggers were, where the way out was, which was through him and, and through the blood that he shed for us. I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you that he willingly gave up his life that we could have eternal life. And Father God, I just I ask you now to please send your spirit to be here in the shop, Father God, as you always do every single day, but also, Father God, with my family, wherever they are right now, whatever they're doing, um, you know, if they're fixing sandwiches for the kids or if they're, they're doing the laundry or, you know, maybe the guys are out mowing the lawn or whatever it is, Father God, that you would surround them in your spirit. You would bless them and uh, keep them safe, Lord God. And I just ask, Father, that uh, for those who need help, for those who need healing, um, those who just need you, Father God, to intervene on their behalf, that you would hear their prayers, hear our prayers for them, Father, and uh, that you would step in and you would make yourself known in those situations, Father. I praise you, Father God. I ask you to bless this time together. Bless the words, Father God, because they're your words. They're not mine. They come from you, Father God. I pray these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. All right. Okay, so my new articulating arm did come in yesterday, so I've been playing with this all day yesterday, so let me see if I can get this right the first time. If I can't, I may screw it up. But you know what? That's okay. So we'll go like this. We'll go like that. Uh, oh, there it is. Wow, look at that. Nailed it the first time. Well, mark that down on the calendar, folks, because that probably will never happen again. There we go. All right. Yes. Yeah, I pray for firemen every single day, Dakota. When we close out, I pray for all of them. So, if you'd stand where able, if, gentlemen, you'd remove your hats, ladies, if you'd place your hand over your heart, and join me in saying the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Oh, it moved. How dare you move like that? What the heck? What are you trying to pull on me here? Okay, I got to loosen you up. I got to loosen you up again. There we go. And yep, there's the plans for one of my boxes, right? Oh, yeah, there we go. Back. Back to me. Okay. So, no, I got to turn you like, there we go. Uh, get this thing locked back down here. I love it because it locks in solid. It's just the articulating arm is, is getting used to it. It's a new one. Good morning, Uplifting Joe. How you doing this morning? Oh, come on. Stay put. Thank you. Are you going to move now? No? Good. Thank you. All right. Oh, shoot. Hang on a second.
There's one thing I forgot. I forgot to switch networks. You guys have been here a while. You know what happens if I don't switch my network. Uh, okay. Come on. Silly phone. Good. Okay. And there we are. We're back. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's right. I got to bring this out of here. Give me another second. I forgot. I found this out last night that it does not like to be dialed into this back little corner. So we'll go like that. We'll go like this. We'll bring it out like that. It's right there. All right. And that should do it. Yep. And then loosen this one up and straighten this up. Okay. You got to straighten up. Come on. Ah, I love getting new equipment. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I had to um I had to switch out to uh to check or to transfer networks. So that's what the problem was. That's why it froze. So good morning guys. It's Saturday. Um it's an awesome day. It'll be fantastic. Uh all those neat things. So um I'm going to I'm going to start by asking you guys. I'm going to ask you if you guys would um, keep a family in prayer, um, we we've I've been following the the, the January six people, and some of you may not agree. Some of you may agree. Whatever, um, that's up to you. Um, whether you agree or not agree with them or whatever, um, the situation is at hand where um, the powers that be have stated that um, there we, we there is a there's a, a gentleman who has served his time he has done what they had demanded of him okay if you will he has surrendered the pound of flesh that they have uh, decided to take from him uh, by being incarcerated. And when the time came for him to be a free man, which our laws in our land say that if you pay the price, that you, you know, you pay the debt and you are, you are a free man. You spend your time in prison or in jail or wherever. And when that, um, when that time is done, you are set free. Okay. Well, it seems that we have a judge that does not believe in, in, in that part of the law. He only believes in the part of the law that says that he can do this or that. He can make them stay or he can make them go. He can make them do whatever. Kind of sounding like, Pontius Pilate, you know, or maybe sounding like some of the the um, the rulers that are you know going down in in uh, the stuff that's going down um, down south, you know, uh, South America way. Um, these dictators that are are taking over, and this judge has taken upon himself to say that that um, the person that's supposed to be getting out, the person he's supposed he's done with his time. This should be getting out. He should be returning to his family, uh, hugging on his children, hugging his wife, okay, going out and mowing the lawn on a Saturday, um, integrating back into society. But no, society's going to hold it against him, okay? They don't, you know, they're, they're, they don't believe in the forgive and forget. They, they, they're going to try and hold it against him and everything. And this judge has decided that no, um, he is, he's a dangerous person, uh, to society. So they're not going to release him. Okay. So, um, oh, and I, I was going to write it down too. Um, give me a second. Give me a second. I got to pick this up. Uh, it's going to take me a second here. Yeah, I got it. Uh, it will allow me to touch back in. Cool. Okay. Get out of there. 
Um, I love having different avenues to being able to find things, especially when I'm hot. Okay, nah, dude, dude, no, 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 no. Where are you? Where are you? Uh, that was you. Where were you? Where'd you go? Dad, damn it, there it is. Um, his name is Guy Reffitt, and his wife's name is Nicole. Guy served his time. He did his time in prison. Okay, whether we agree with it or not, that is beside the point. Whether we agree that, that yes, he should have, or no, he shouldn't have, or they're all wrong. I have my own views, but I'm going beyond that. I'm looking at it as the way that God has, has spoken about law, spoken about structure. And when somebody says, when you do this, then this will happen. When you do whatever, then this will happen. And then they say, okay, you were a bad boy. You got spanked. You know, you got sat in the corner or, or you get put in prison. And when you put your time in, then you can go home and be with your family. And then they turn around and they say, oh, no, because we feel that you're, you're this and you're that. It's, well, this is because one judge, one judge feels this. Now, that's a dictatorship. When you have one person that says, because I feel this, then this is what's going to happen. Okay? That's not right. I don't care who you are. I don't care what universe you come from or, or you know, where you hail from. A law is a law. Structure is structure. What kind of a man is this judge who cannot stand behind the word that he is given? I wouldn't trust this man to carry a sack of rocks across the street. Okay? This is my personal opinion. Because if I can't shake a man's hand and I can't look him in the eye, if he does not stand behind the word that he gives, then he's a liar. Straight out. That's what he is. So Guy needs our prayers, folks. He is being done dirty. Because somebody, some person has put himself above the law, above what is right. Okay? If you have information, if you have uh, data that proves that what you're saying is true, then bring it, bring it forth a front, in front of everybody. Don't sit in your little dark room in the back and make up evil plans just because somebody's pulling your puppet strings and, and, and you're going to cotton to what they, what they say. Have a backbone. Stand up. Do what the right thing is. Exactly. Naomi, he's not following his constitutional oath. See, a judge, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly that. God is our judge. God is, is not going to sway one way or the other because of this or because who whispers in his ear. I have sinned. Therefore, my, my payment, my... my um, Uh, yeah, my payment, and I can't even pick up the word now, and I just had it, uh, is death, the wages, my wages, for what I have done in my life, my sin is death. That's it, period. Guy did something. And for whatever reason, they feel that it was bad enough to put him into prison. Right or wrong, that's what they decided. He did his time. He should be out today 
mowing the lawn. He should be out today hugging and kissing on his wife. He should be playing with his kiddos. He should be seeing his mom and dad. But because somebody put themselves above the law, he's still there. Now, how many more times is this going to happen? And if you don't think they're going to come for you, if you don't think this is going to happen, folks, you need to go back and look through history. You need to go back and look through things that have happened before. Okay? They're not going to come after me because I believe that, that, that Guy was not guilty. They're not going to come after me because I believe that gasoline engines are the best thing in the world. It's a whole lot better than their stupid little electric toy cars. Okay? They're going to come after me because I believe in the one that can put them asunder. I believe in God. My faith, everything I am, I believe in God. I know that God can do miracles. I know, I've seen what he can do. We've seen it here through prayer that, that um, we have family here who who fallen off of a roof. Okay? For a 12-year-old or a 15-year-old or a 20-year-old, that's no big deal. When you push it on up into the 50s, that's a big deal. Nine feet to the concrete ground, and yet he shows no signs now. His body is repaired. He shows no signs that that happened. I believe in the one living and true God. Okay? And that is why they're going to come after me, because I don't bend my knee to what they say we're supposed to do. Okay? And that, folks, is the problem. Because if, if a judge sitting on a bench can say that, oh, this person is a detriment to society, he's dangerous, we don't want to do that, he'll go out and do it again. Show me the empirical data that states that he is in fact that. What do you have? How many fights was he in when he was in prison? Did he stab somebody when he was in prison? Where's the data? Oh, you don't have data. Oh, okay. What is it that he did that makes it? Because you're the judge. You're not the jury. You are not the witness. You are the judge. The information comes to you. A judge oversees the court. The jury of the peers of the person are the ones, in fact, that make that decision, not the judge. The judge doesn't sit up there and go, oh, you're guilty, even though the jury's sitting right there. No. What does he do? He asks the jury. He asks the former foreman of the jury, have you come to a decision? They say, yes, we have. And then they read their decision. Okay. Guy needs our prayers. But I think more than that, and this is going to sound different, but that judge needs our prayers also. Because that judge can destroy lives. He's destroying a family right now by his decision, okay? When I get done here today, I, I'm going over to the gym, okay? Because I've got to work off some of this anger that I've got right now because there are some things that I could say, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to go back into that world, okay? I'm not going to allow myself to be tempted to open my mouth and say things that I should not have say. But this needs to be corrected, okay? And the best place to start, folks, is in prayer. 
we need to pray for Guy that that for for him and his wife. That. Good morning, Zach. Good morning, Joe. That um. This will pass soon. That his legal team takes this up with the courts, with the court system, and get him where he needs to be. Because this is this is this is the 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 this is the showing of a dictatorship where you have judges that just go off the rails. They do whatever they want. Okay. A lot of them, a lot of them are getting really bent out of shape. They're like little children who get their toys taken away from them. They stomp their feet and they bang their hands on the ground or they lay there and scream. Like I saw a kid in, in, in Walmart the other day who wasn't, his mom was taking him out of the toy section and the kid was throwing a tantrum. Okay. My kids didn't do that because they knew exactly what was going to happen. Okay. The choices that they make would dictate the life that they lead. My kids, if they threw a tantrum, meant that they were going to have a very, very sore backside because I didn't stand for that. The choices that these judges are going to make the lives that they are going to affect will dictate the kind of life that they're going to lead. Maybe not here. Good morning, Pamela. Pamela. Good morning, Rebecca. Exactly, Rebecca. Exactly. And, and you know that they are a pit of vipers. These judges will stand together. They'll huddle together. But you know what? All it's going to take is for one of them to step away. All it's going to take is for one of the judges to say, you know what? No, no, I'm not doing this. We took an oath. We, we said we were going to do the right thing. Okay. And the eclipse, uh, that's something that happens about every seven to 12 years, um, sometimes a little bit longer. And it's a point where the, uh, where the moon gets in front of the sun. It's a physical phenomenon. It's something that happens. Was it biblical? I don't know. Might have been. So, um, it, it might have been. It might not have been. I don't know. I mean, you know, I could, people can take just about any action or anything and, and say that it's biblical. Um, you know, yeah, it passed over a whole bunch of places called Nineveh, and, and you know, it, it crossed over exactly, supposedly, where one town was or is. Um, I don't know. But, uh, amen, what Max says, God uses all things for good. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Um, and, and, you know, like it says in the Bible, all good things come to those who wait, who wait upon the Lord. And yeah, there are a lot of signs, Zach. There's a lot of things going on. Um, but um, it's not, it, it, for me, it's not for me to try and decipher what all these signs are and everything. Um, I need to stay focused on the long game. I need to stay focused on the fact that we have millions and millions of people in this country who, um, some of them never even heard of God. Some never even heard of who Jesus is. Um, they've been raised in, in, you know, whatever, you know, religion or whatever walk of life that they're in, and they don't know who God is. Well, those are the ones that I need to stay focused on. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, God, God is upset. You know, I mean, we've got a, we have a, a person 
who is occupying our highest office in the land and yet does not have the backbone to stand as we always have with Israel. And, and instead of, of his, his department standing and saying, we will stand with Israel, they're telling Israel that, you know, well, you need to stop with this and you need to stop doing that and da 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 And you know what? You come into my house. You tell me how to run my house and find out just exactly how fast your nose gets broken. Because you don't, you don't walk into my house and tell me how to run my house. I will run my house the way that God tells me to run my house. I will run my house by the Bible. You don't tell me how to run my house. And that's kind of what Israel is saying, is you're not going to tell us how to run our house. You have no idea how our house functions. Your house may function different than my house, which is fine. It's the outcome that we need. We need to have children who are raised up, who know the Lord that uh love jesus okay exactly joe that's we need to we need to be loving those people around us this this whole thing about picking sides and everything it's it's why don't you just go pick your nose don't be picking sides go pick your nose okay because it's it's not right so this judge needs to be prayed for okay um i'm having i'm i'm having problems contemplating about this whole thing with with the speaker of the house johnson you know he's doing all these he says he was going to do all these things and all of a sudden he's doing other things and then the next thing i know he's in mar-a-lago mar lago with with president trump so I do what I normally do. As Mag says, you know, I do it about what we normally do about this time. I pray. When I get on the treadmill over at the gym today, I'm going to be praying, okay? Um, when I start lifting the weights today, because I'm going to take everything up a notch, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be praying I don't hurt myself, but I'm going to be praying for Trump, for Johnson, for this judge, for Guy and his wife, for all of us. Well, Zach, um, I, I, I kind of agree with you, but at the same time, it's got to happen in his timing. It, it can't be our timing because we are mere men. We don't know the mind of God. Okay. Um, one of the guys that I listen to, uh, his name is Dan Bongino. And, and, and when, when things happen, when things go sideways, okay, um, he, he says, he, one of the things that he says almost every day now is, is it bad enough yet? Is it bad enough yet? I don't know what bad enough yet is. I don't, I've been through bad. Um, my body reeks of bad. Because of, of, I've got, I have places in my back, folks, that are completely numb because of the surgeries that I've had, because of, of, of things that have happened to me. Um, so I, I know my level of bad, but it, it, is it bad enough yet for this country? I don't know. I only can hold to one thing, and that is that it's all in God's time. So what I do know is that when God wills, when God moves, we will see it. When God wills things to happen, understand, look at it this way. We're going to go back. We're going to go way back. The year's 2016. Right? They'll go even before that. We'll go back, let's say, 2016. We'll go back to 2010. 
and people are hearing about this dude. He's got a, a reality show, right? Uh, he's some kind of multi-billionaire, you know, and he's calling this, it's calling the, the show The Apprentice, right? And he has these people come in and he's got them doing stuff, you know, business kind of stuff. But when they don't get it right, what does he do? You're fired. You're out of here, right? So you kind of move, start moving forward the clock and then, you know, he's talking to people about running for office. So in 2016, he runs for office, and he wins. Folks, if at that precise moment, when evil was caught off guard, and President Trump got in, if that had not happened, folks, we would not see what's going on right now. We would all still have those, those uh, scales over our eyes. I believe that that was for a reason. And I believe that him losing, and this is going to sound weird, but I believe that him losing in 20 was for a reason. I, I don't like it. I don't, I don't agree with it. But it was for a reason, because um, Hishram, yes, yes, how are you? Good morning, Slayer. Um, if, if you put, a, here, there, there's two ways to look at this, but if you take a frog and you put him in a pot of, of cold water or just, you know, tap water, right? He's going to swim around in there. He's going to be happy, just happy as a pig in slop, right? He's just going to be swimming, swimming, swimming. You start that fire. You start turning it up. Frog's not going to notice. He's not going to understand what's going on. It's getting a little bit warm, but he's going to swim around, swim around, swim around. Pretty soon, it's going to be too hot for him to swim. And it's going to cook him. Okay. You take that same scenario, though, and if you take a frog and you boil the pot of water, and then you take the frog and you drop him into that pot, he knows instantaneously that something's wrong. Instantaneously, he knows that something's wrong. Folks, for years and years and years, these things have been going on, right? With you got. I mean, you know, Nixon, you got Clinton, you got, you got the Bushes, you've got, I mean, all these things. I'm, I'm still learning things now about the Bush, Bush people and everything that I didn't know. Okay. But none of this, the, 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 the curtain wouldn't have been pulled back if Donald J. Trump had not run for office in 2016. Okay. Everything was exposed at that point in time. So evil had to do whatever humanly possible to try and put that back, but you can't. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Okay? You can not undo what we've seen, what we know now. And because of that, each day that we move forward, each day that we're praying, each day that we are depending upon God, our vision becomes sharper. We're still peeling, we're still picking scales out of our eyes. You know, maybe we're believing that our court system is still true. Okay. We believe that, that our judges are always right. And then we get something like this. We get news like this about Guy where the judge on his own accord feels that, and, and I don't believe, truthfully, I don't believe it was his own accord. I believe he went back into his chambers one time after a court session and 
there was somebody there waiting for him. Or he got a call, or he got a message, or he got a letter. And, and it gave him the directive. It says, this is what's going to be happening. Here's what you're going to do. Okay? I don't believe that he had the male fortitude, if you will, to make that kind of a decision because like any other man, he would be as high up as he is. He'd, he'd be afraid to lose his job. Okay? He didn't do that on his own accord. He was fed information. He was told things. And he made that decision on the information he was given, not on his own accord. So that's why we need to pray for him, but we also need to pray for those who are pulling the strings, that the curtain comes down. If it comes down on top of them, oh well, but the curtain needs to come down. There needs to be transparency. There needs to be truth. And the only way that happens, folks, is if we get this country back on its stable course with God. And it's, it's happening. It's, it's happening all the time. Um, there's a group of men right now that are doing um, conferences. Uh, they're going to do, I believe they're going to do 19 of them across the country. They're going to be hitting towns all over the place and everything. That it, it's called uh, the, I believe it's called the Truth and Courage, um, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, it uh, meetings or whatever, um, and they uh, they're working to bring the people who still have more scales in their eyes to the truth. And in doing that, they need to be prayed over. There are people that are moving all over this country. There are things that are happening. Churches are, are uh, they're being hammered. But at the same time, there's more people that are searching for God every single day. You've, you've probably seen it in your lives. You've probably talked to people. Oh, crap. Oh, shoot. Yeah, my phone got hot. Um, so hopefully, give it a second. Hopefully, it'll catch back up with itself. Exactly. Well, that see, that's it, Cleo. We are, by her letting her presence be known, by her sitting there, by her going, they know that they're caught, okay? It's like us. We know when we sin. You know, I do, when I sin. Why? Because we all have a conscience, right? One God, Ayub, one God. Um, and our conscience tells us when we're sinning, our conscience tells us that, and conscience means con, with, science, knowledge, with knowledge. We're doing something with knowledge that it's wrong. When we do something that we know is wrong, we have to take that to Jesus. We've got to take that to the cross. We, gotta, we have to repent for what we're doing. We've got to repent for what we say or how we feel. Um, it says in the Bible, in, in, in the Old Testament, that, that with direction in regards to sacrifice, if you go to take your sacrifice to the priest, to the altar, and you remember that a brother has something against you, you leave your sacrifice there. And you go and you make amends with that brother. 
or sister, whatever it is. Why? Folks, anger only builds more anger. Okay? If, if you have something against a brother or they have something against you, it's not good. It's not. Because in that, in that, that anger or whatever it is, what, whatever's causing that, that disruption of your spirit with them is not good. Yeah, I know. It's, and you guys are probably starting to see some laggings because I didn't turn on my cooler. Um, my phone just gave me a message. It's overheating. So I got it on. We should be, should level out here pretty quick. Um, so, and this is one of the things is that, that, um, I work every single day to, to be a man of peace, to walk with God in all that I do, looking for him and praying, loving him, loving the people around me. I don't look for the bad in people. I look for the good. And um, when we do that, folks, we'll find it. You'll find it. I will find it. Okay? Um, and, and we kind of got off. I, I, and that's a long way of saying please pray for Guy and his wife. Because, and, and, and understand, God's not going to bring us to something that he's not going to bring us through. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. And he will not pile things on you. You cannot get through. You just have to keep going. You can't stop. Um, you, you have to keep moving. Yes, there will come times when you just you feel like you can't take it anymore. But you've got to take a breath. You have to relax for a minute. You have to realize who's really in charge and move on. Hey, beauty, how you doing this morning? I haven't seen you in quite a while. Welcome. Hey, missies, how you doing? Hello, hearts. We have to live our life the way God wants us to, okay? Uh, have a blessed day, Ricky. Um, we have to keep our eyes on him. This world is going to come after us. This world is... Good morning, Gia. This world is... It's going to try and tear us apart. It's going to turn brother against brother. It's going to turn father against son. Because the only way that it can win is in the chaos. The only way that it can win is in the anger. Imagine this. Imagine. I'm going to use this as an example. Um. The, the, the war that's going on right now between Russia and Ukraine. Imagine those men out there fighting, and then all of a sudden, they stop. And they just straight up, straight out, complete and totally deny their, their quote-unquote leaders, their generals or whatever, and they all walk out into the middle of the field and they start having a, a, a prayer session out there. They drop all their guns and everything. They shut their tanks off and everything. And they go out there and they start praying together. Okay? And they start, they start eating together. 
And they start becoming friends with each other. Because they realize that, that it's not because of what God wanted. It's not because of any, it's because of what man wanted is why they are out there to try and kill each other. It's not because God said, I want this done, I want that done. No, no. It's because man said, I don't want them to do something. The whole reason, folks, I just I found out this thing. The whole reason this whole thing started is because Russia wants to be the big brother. He wants to be the big bully. And he wants to tell Ukraine what they're going to do. They said, oh, you know what, Ukraine, you can, you can be your own people. We'll, we'll let you have this land. You can live here. That's cool. You can become the Ukrainians if you want. That's, that's cool. But you will never join the United Nations. You'll never join NATO. Why not? If they are their own country, why not? Who are you as the big brother to tell them what they can and cannot do? That would have been like my big brother telling me that, that you're going to become a bank auditor. You're going to become a, um, 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 a bank person. You're going to be working in banks. You're not going to be a mechanic. You're not going to be a welder. You're not going to be a carpenter. You're not going to work in construction. You're going to go work in a bank the rest of your life. No, I don't want to. Yes, you will. I will take you down there myself, and I will, you, I will make sure that you're there. And if you don't do it, every time you step out of line, I'll smack you on the back of the head. No. There is no right of man to tell another what he will do. Okay? Ex except in the way of laws. But laws are always put in place for the betterment now, it's going to get kind of sticky here, but it's betterment of all those involved to the understanding of man, okay? War is usually done because of greed. Somebody wants something, okay? Look at North and South Korea. Why are they at war? Why are they not one nation? They are one nation. Just look at the name, North and South Korea. They are Korea. But they divided. Why? Because one wanted to go one way and the other one didn't. They didn't find an evil, a, a, a middle ground. They just, one said, you're going to do this. The other one said, no, we're not. And now they're separated. Families. It happens in families. Who has the most power? It, well, it's who has the most power, but Cleo, the problem is, is it's greed. It's, it's connected consciousness. <laughs> Good morning, Wade. Hey, Thomas. Um, if you really, really drill down on it, it's because of greed. Somebody wants something done their way. And just because they've got the power, they have the army behind them or whatever, they feel they have the right to impose that on others. There's no law that says that, that Ukraine cannot join the, uh, NATO. There's nothing that says it's Russia is the only problem. Okay? The Korea. North Korea and South Korea. There's no reason why South Korea cannot be what they want to be. No, North Korea wants to force them to do something. Look at China. China wants to go in and take over... Um, I just had the name of it. Um, the other part of the country that they say belongs to them, whatever it was. Um, but... They want to impose upon them what they want. Yes, Levi, good morning. Um, everything that we see right now in this world that's going on is because of greed. A man somewhere wants something. Okay? They want that power. They want 
to be able to inflict that upon the other people. And it's not right. You have no right to inflict or to impose something upon your, your will upon somebody else. Well, Enoch, if you actually knew the person that your name came from, you would understand. And um, so these things that are going on, folks, aren't right, okay? So we need to keep them in prayer, all of them. Um, yeah, China wants Taiwan. Thank you, Naomi. Yeah, China wants Taiwan. They want to inflict. They're saying Taiwan belongs to us. Who cares? You don't need any more land. Why can't you leave it alone? Why can't you be happy where you are? You know? You could go in there. I guarantee you, with the right people, you could go into China. You could turn that place into to a garden spot by allowing the people to live their lives the way they want. You don't lock them up in their apartment complexes. You don't weld the doors shut. You don't tell them when and when they cannot eat or where or where they cannot spend their money. Oh, look, Dana's three pounds overweight. No, Dana, your card's no longer good at McDonald's. Okay. Um, no, Dana, you, you, you're, um, we, we're looking at your, at your blood test and, and, uh, you know, you're, you're a little bit out of whack there. So no, you can't have any more red meat for the next month. Why? What is it to these people, what I eat, where I go, what I buy? Why do these other countries have to inflict their belief system, their, their um, will upon a we You always notice that the, China's not trying to force the United States to become part of China. They're not trying to do that. They know they get their butt kicked around the block. Why do you think Japan never, ever tried to invade the United States of America? Why do you think that China, I mean Japan, never came in here? Because they were so afraid that behind every single blade of grass was an American with a gun. Basically what it was is they knew they were going to get their butts kicked. Okay, now, I don't know. But this was back when, when America was what we were meant to be, the shining city on the hill. But you see them taking advantage of the weaker, the smaller countries. Okay? And um it just it's it's sad it's sad because uh respect in our country is gone there's still pieces and parts of it here and there but good morning miss kathleen you you i mean even here here's a perfect example we have all these people that are here who, who come here for a reason to talk about God, to hear about God. And then you have the other ones who come in that, that try to disrupt it, try to, to um, force their belief pattern or their mindset into the conversation. And it's unfortunate, but those are usually the ones that get escorted to the door. Okay. There's a lot here to learn. They could uh, learn a lot about about what we talk about, what we're doing here. But instead, they think that they could go from behind their keyboard in their grandma's basement somewhere, um, eating hot pockets, and going in to try and disrupt something. 
and um, you you go in and, and disrupt instead of learning. And um, like other countries, they, they go in, instead of trying to understand how another country lives or what they're doing, they go in and, yeah, there's freedom of speech, but Enoch, you need to learn where that speech is acceptable. Right? You know, if, if you are, are an uh, ecologist, if you're a tree hugger, you don't go into a, into a stream where they're talking about high-performance motors and, and millions of horsepower and stuff like that and start screaming that you can't be doing that because of the trees and you need to stop because of the environment and you don't, don't raise cattle because, you know, the cattle farts are destroying the atmosphere. That's not a wise place to go. You learn how to ease yourself into a conversation. Okay. So, yeah, your, your time could be better spent somewhere, somewhere doing exactly what you need to be doing, Enoch. You know, is spreading your word the way you want to spread it. So, um, but yes, folks, in our world right now, there's people <clears throat> trying to force their will upon other people. And, and I mean, I, Israel and, 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 uh, Gaza, I mean, it's, it's, that whole thing is, is a nightmare in itself to try and understand. But, uh, we need to call on Jesus. We need to call on the name of God to start with us, each one of us, okay, to, um, you're right, Cleo. It's an, it, it is a battle between good and evil. Okay? Um, but the thing is, see, evil will attack. They want to inflict pain. They want to inflict um, damage. Where us following God, we don't want to invade their space. We don't want to go there. We want to just show them love. We want to show them, you know, that that um, that we we love them for who they are. We don't may not love what they're doing or what they believe, or we don't, but we still love them. You know, Enoch is a great, probably a great guy. You know, he's just somewhere along the lines programming got a little bit off kilter, okay, you got the ones and zeros got mixed up somewhere, so, you know, and, and he's going down a path he thinks is the right one, and, and, you know, he may know what the right path is, but just at this point is not accepting it. Um, but we need to show people the love of Jesus. We shouldn't be carrying around hate or anger in our hearts. Which brings me back to praying for Guy and his wife. Don't pray out of hate. Don't pray because you're mad. Search yourself. Search to make sure that your motives are true. Your motives are right. When you pray for somebody, make sure that your heart is in the right place when you pray. Um, a movie, and, and I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie, um, it's called Sister Act with Whoopi Goldberg. I know, I know, I can already hear all of you guys going, oh, oh, oh. Um, you too, Hassam. Um, there was a part in the movie, you know, she's playing the act 
of a sister at a, at a convent. And there's a point in there where um, the bad guy is, is I forget what the whole scene was, but at one point, she looks at him and she goes, hey, Vince. And he goes, what? And she goes, God bless you. And, and even in the negative situation that they're in, where these guys are trying to kill these nuns, you know, they're, or they're trying to, they think they are, they're trying to capture them or whatever. And with all this going on, Whoopi could have done something else. She could have said something else, but she didn't. Her character looked at him and said, God bless you. Jesus, when he was hung on the cross, had every right because the empirical data proved that he had done nothing wrong. These, the, the people around him were brainwashed to the point where they did not believe that he was the Son of God. Exactly, Naomi. I, I pray that, that Enoch, I pray that, that <laughs> this, is, this may be a tall ask, but in some way that God would show him the person, the life of his namesake and what Enoch did what who ne Enoch was and the life that he led and that maybe that would turn him around turn his heart his life around that he would become a great man like Enoch was you know um but we shouldn't carry the anger. Jesus had that ability. Hanging on the cross, going out into the desert, being led out there, he had the power of Jesus. He had the power of God in him. If he got hungry, all he had to do is just say, hey, Father, can I have some food? And he would have been blessed with food. He would have said, you know, my, my feet are, are, are hurting. Can I have a chair to sit in? Or, or, you know, whatever. But he didn't. He didn't exercise that power that he had until it came time to utilize that power. That power wasn't when he was on the cross because that had to be completed. The power was at the very end. In three words, when he said, it is finished. That is when he exercised the full, complete extent of his power. Because the second that he gave up his spirit into the hands of God, and he passed from one realm to the next, It was that exact moment when the whole world was shaken, when, when the, the curtain was torn in the temple, okay? And, and there, there's a whole lot, that I'm, and I'm still working on it. I've got two verses that I still haven't figured out yet, but I was listening to some guys that were talking about this. and um, what time is it? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'll do some more research on this for next week. I, I really don't want to get into this this late. I, I wanted to kind of start it earlier. Um, but I did have something else also. We're talking about Jesus on the cross. Easter was, what, two weeks ago? A week ago? And, and we all know What's the way the process was, you know, Monday he enters into 
um, Jerusalem and he goes in, he's riding on a donkey, you know, they're putting the leaves before him and all that. And, and he goes in and then all the court trials start and they descend upon him and they take him into custody and, and, um, you know, they, they do all the stuff. And then, um, Friday, yeah, two weeks ago. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, and on, fr on Good Friday, he, I don't know why they call it Good Friday, but he got hung. He was put up on the cross, right? He had nails driven through his, through his, everybody says hands. It really wasn't his hands. It was actually just above the wrist. It split the two bones in the, in the, uh, in the arm because the weight could not be held by the hands. It would just tear out. There's so many little bones. And he had one through his feet. Okay, and then he was laid in a grave with a stone over it for three days. Everybody wonders what happened during that time. What, what was going on? And that's what I'm going to talk about next week uh, when I get these last two verses nailed down. I got most of it nailed down, but I want to put it into a form where I can roll through it. But let's talk about Jesus hanging on the cross. Jesus died on a cross, also a tree, right? I feel the donkey is a representation of how Jesus can come, any, can calm any unruly spirits. Does a donkey? Don't listen. <laughs> That's, you're, you're right. No, donkeys are like that. But it was, it was a baby. It was a foal. It had never been ridden before. Um, it was not like the older ones, and it, it submitted to him. When they brought it to him, he sat upon it, and it carried him. Okay? Um, but when Jesus died on the cross, they, they, also, they, they say he died on the tree. Some, some groups will say he died on a tree. Why? He died on the tree because man stole from the tree in the beginning, didn't he? The, the apple came from the tree. So by being nailed to the cross, he was um, paying back for that sin of, of stealing from the tree. Okay? God put back on the tree for us to undo everything in the beginning. He went to the cross to save us from our sins. Our original sin was peeling that apple off of the apple tree. He died on that cross to pay back, give his life because we took life from that tree. We pulled that apple off the tree, right? His hands were pierced because our hands stole from the tree of life. Our hands picked that apple. It, they didn't, now, I don't know if God would have had a problem or not with it. You know, if she'd walked up and found an apple on the ground and, oh yeah, look, there's an apple on the ground. It just fell. That's cool. No, they, she grabbed one off of the tree. By the hand of man, by the hand of woman, but still man, um, we sinned. She, Eve, sinned. And Adam bit the apple, so he's in, he's, in, he's in for a penny, in for a pound. Okay? His feet were pierced because of the first messianic prophecy involves feet. The first messianic prophecy of Jesus talks about feet. Okay? To, to satisfy that, um, that situation. And on that, um, something I heard this morning that I had not realized. and I mean, I did, but I didn't. Um, understand when he was on the cross, he had two thieves, one on each side of him, correct? Um, no, it's, it's born of sin. We were born in sin because of, um, the, I believe it's because of the seed, because of the original sin, okay, the, the intercourse that, was, that happened. 
And that's why it is, it is classified that, I mean, that's why it say, you know, we are born of sin. Um, but um, the two thieves on each side of him, in true fashion, they broke their legs. They broke their legs at the knees. Why? Well, I don't, I've had a broken leg, and I don't know about you, but I couldn't stand on it. That's on one leg. That's standing on the ground. Yes, but I sent this from my parents that birthed us so we were born into sin. Right. Well, we were born into the sin of this world in that, in that aspect. So, both of them had to have their legs broken. Why? Because on the cross, usually the people would die from suffocation because they can't breathe. If you hold your hands out, and you try to hang from your hands, you can't breathe, okay? Your, your, your structure, you can't, your body cannot heave up and down to be able to, to, um, to cycle that air through your lungs. So they usually die of suffocation. But in the prophecies, it says that, that the perfect lamb will be sacrificed, but not one bone will be broken. It states that in the Bible. So they didn't break his legs, Jesus' legs. The other two they did. They didn't break his legs, though. Okay, His side was pierced because Eve came from the side to make atonement for Eve, the one who led into temptation. She was tempted by the snake, and I've talked about this before. She had the opportunity to, as soon as she started to get tempted, she knew she wasn't supposed to touch the apples, but she could have gone to God and said, Hey, God, there's this snake out here, and he's different than all the other snakes around here. He's different than all the other animals. He's weird. He's like talking to me, and he's telling me that I need to eat off of that tree that you told me not to touch. She could have. And she didn't. When she picked the apple, that was the bad part. But then she took a bite of it, and then she took it to Adam. Now, Adam could have chased, chastised her and said, Look, woman, where did you get this from? Well, I got it from the, from the apple tree out there. And, and he could have, in, in all male explosion and everything, gone off on her and then gone to God and said, Look at this. You gave me this woman. You take her out of my side, you take a rib and you make her, and, and then what does she do? She, she buries me. She's, she goes and gets an apple off the tree, right? She had that opportunity, but she didn't take it. He had the opportunity, but he didn't take it. Then instead of, once they realized what they'd done, instead of going to God and confessing their sins and trying to repent, probably, and talking to him about it and trying to get it correct, they hid. They tried to play hide and seek with God. Folks, take it from someone who knows. You can't play hide and seek with God. I don't care where you go. You can go into the farthest reaches of the space. If you could travel at, at 12,000 light years a second, you can't get outside of the reach of God. He's be like, yeah, okay, everybody's, everybody, wait, wait. Where'd Cleo go? Where is Cleo? Where's... Oh, she's, she's, o she's over there. I'm going to go get her. Okay? He knows. Trust me. I can run. He can find me. He's done it before. He'll do it again if I do. Her, okay, so Jesus' size was pierced to atone for Eve the one who led us into temptation. Why the side? Well, that's where the rib came from, isn't it? The crown of thorns on his head? Why? The curse of creation is that the ground produce thorns or thistles 
Jesus literally takes the curse upon his head to reverse it. When Jesus hung on the cross, folks, that the whole thing leading up into it, the beating and, and the crown of thorns and the hanging on the cross, all of that, he took that, he did that to reverse the sins that had been committed that were being passed down. He had to first reverse that before he could give us the path to God. Jesus says that no one will come unto the Father but by me. There is no back door. There's no trap door. You do not halo jump into the top of heaven. You cannot tunnel under the wall. I don't care if you're the greatest cat burglar ever known to mankind through all time. You cannot break into heaven. There is no option. Okay? It doesn't happen. There's only one way into heaven. That's through the blood of Jesus. He says that no one comes unto the Father but by me. You think Trump's got security around him? You think Biden's got security around him? You think these people got security around them? They got all kinds of secret service and people. You got... You got teams that go in. Trump decides he's going to have a rally somewhere, right? He doesn't just show up. <clears throat> he doesn't put out a flyer saying, "Hey, let's have a uh, let's have a um, let's have a, a a rally here at this airport." You know, while he's flying along, and he says, tells the pilot, "Hey, land over there. Let's go have a rally there." No, no. They plan this out. They send out teams in advance, advance teams that go out, and and. Good morning, Tom. Shalom. And, and he sends his teams out. I know people have been on some of those teams. And they go out and they, do, they go through everything. They literally go with a fine-tooth comb. And then they start running the drills. They start going through. He's going to come in. What time? We don't know yet. When he flies in, what he, where is he going to land? He's going to land on that airstrip right there. No, no, we don't want him on that airstrip. It's too far across the airport. Too much can happen. We want him on this airstrip. So now the airport's got to change all their flight patterns so that the planes can go to another, go to the other airstrip. Okay. So then he comes in. Okay, so he's going to come in. Then what? He's going, okay. He's going to taxi over here like this. No, we can't have him taxiing going one way. We have to have him taxiing going the other way due to the doors. Plus, taxiing the other way gives him immediate access back to the airstrip in case something happens. He can get out of here. Okay, what are we going to do about vehicles? Well, the vehicles are going to be here and here and here and here. Okay, that's good. All right, so now what about people? Okay, we're getting people here. We need people here. We need people there. We need to do this. We need to do this. This all happens before Trump ever shows up. These are all the people that he needs. These are the, the same with, with, with Biden when he goes somewhere. He needs a little bit extra because he's got he's to have those people what, what tell him where to get off the stage and how to get onto the stage and, and where to stand and all that because um, he can't read his cards that he's given in the morning. And the thing is, God doesn't need all that. God's only got one guard. He only has one guard son who is protecting his kingdom. He has one son that checks everybody. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you're short and fat or if you're tall and skinny. It doesn't matter if you're white or black. It doesn't matter if you've got hair or no hair. It doesn't matter if you walk with a limp or if you're completely fit, 100% fit. It doesn't matter who we are. Everybody gets checked. Every single person, I don't care who you are or what you believe, every single person gets their credentials checked. And it's not hard. We come in, they pull up the book of life. He look, he look yeah, oh, Dana. Yeah, Dana. Okay. Yeah, I got him. Hang on a second. Yeah. Okay, here's his life. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right here. This is where all of his sins stopped, right here. 
That's where he accepted Jesus. He accepted Jesus as his Savior. Okay, yeah, he's good to go. Let him in. Okay. Folks, I know where I'm going. Why? Because I've done a lot of bad things in my life. And I know those things have earned me death permanent. Okay? Where I'm going. Where I, where I should be going. What my wages are. Is the New Testament to the Tanakh, the Torah. Is it just a direct translation? Some books are written by apostles added on to it. The, actually, the Torah, if I'm not mistaken, the Torah has actually come out of the Old Testament. It's not the New Testament. Um, Hasidic Jews do not recognize it. And this is my understanding, and it could be misconstrued. It could be wrong. But the Hasidic Jews do not accept the New Testament for the fact that it is because it is a testament to the life of Jesus. The first four books... Um, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all about Jesus, and um, the the Jews do not um, the the Hasidic the the ones that are are hardcore, you know, that haven't accepted the, you know the the haven't accepted Christ. The Torah is the first. Is it first eight books? I wish my son-in-law was here. My son-in-law knows all of this. The first book of the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Yes, the Old Testament. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, that's where, and that's where that is. They, the New Testament, they don't, you know, until unless they are a completed Jew, the first five books. Um, the, uh, um, the New Testament, if they're a completed Jew, which means they have accepted the fact that Jesus is the Messiah and that he came to save us and everything, um, if they're completed Jew, then yes, they believe in the old, in the old and new Testament. Okay. So it's, um, and it's, it's, from what I understand it, it is supposed to be the first five books, Genesis, edit, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and is it Joshua? I believe I'm looking at my. I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. Hang on a second. I can tell you real quick. Yeah, Joshua. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. First five books. Hey, Pastor Henry, how you doing? Exactly. Well, and that's, and, and there are some who don't. There, um, I have friends who are Jewish, who are, they're, 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 a, a completed Jew. They believe in Jesus. They know that he was the Messiah. Um, but they, they still maintain the Jewish um, belief, the Jewish lifestyle, which is it's not bad. It's not wrong. You know, they believe in Jesus. So it's, it's kind of a, of a, you know, they're the chosen ones and they believe in Jesus. So it's, it's kind of like that. They stop at the book of Daniel. Uh, well, that's a long way in, brother. That's, uh, what, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22, 23. That's 24 books if you get to Daniel. You too, Kathleen. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Your live stream keeps popping up. <laughs> Maybe you're supposed to be here, Levi. Who knows? You're back. It keeps popping up. That's cool. You mean dropping out or popping up? Showing up on your on your thing. Um, but anyways, folks, yeah, it's when Jesus dying on the cross was a whole lot more than a man being nailed to a couple of beams. Okay. Um, there was a reason that it was done the way it was done. How he saved us from our sins, saved me from my sin. Okay. Um, 
anyone that you speak with, any, any man that you speak with, a real man, will admit that they've sinned, okay? Because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What that means is, is that we have all sinned and are not worthy of the glory of God, worthy of the, worthy of the glory of heaven. But if we accept Jesus, if we take Jesus into our hearts, if we accept him as our Savior, we repent from those sins. I'm supposed to be, supposed to be making a dragon puppet. <laughs> Oh, you must be an artist, Levi, to make a dragon puppet. Um, but through Christ, through his blood that washes us as white as snow. That's something else, folks. I don't know if any of you guys even know this. Um, I talked about this a few weeks ago is um i found out snake venom you get bitten by a rattlesnake you're you're um up where i live i live up here in the mountains and and we have snakes up here and i was talking to our vet and um there is a thing for dogs they have that is good for a year it's like a like a rabies shot but it's not a rabies shot it is a um anti-venom uh thing that we can we that you can shoot the dogs with and it doesn't bother the dogs at all it doesn't do anything um except for the fact that it slows down the effect if they get bitten by a rattlesnake it slows the effect down so that they can in fact so i can in fact get my dog uh whether it's a hunting dog or my service dog or whatever um get the animal to the vet so that they can, in fact, um, administer the anti-venom to, to save the animal's life. And I asked them, I said, what is the difference? And if you guys get this, this may, this, 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 this you may get this. The first shot is to prolong the life. Instead of dying, let's say, in 10 minutes, it gives me about 45 minutes to get my animal to the vet for the venom, for the anti-venom. The anti-venom saves his life. Okay? Um... In Hebrew means calmness, something soft. And Naomi means my calmness, calm of mine. <laughs> yeah. Your mother did well, Naomi. Your mom did well. Um, so the first one prolongs the life. Folks, we, you and I, deserve to die. Because God said that the wages of sin is death. Now, granted, not when we're a baby, not when we're born into sin. Maybe, like me, you live in a family where Jesus wasn't taught, like, I mean, a lot. Or much at all. Um, I grew up in the Christian Science sh Church, and and it just never felt right for me. It didn't. I didn't. I I couldn't pick up what they were putting down, if you will. And I started going to another church with a friend of mine, and. As for calm, I am working. <laughs> um, and so, eventually, I did find Jesus. I, I I found him, but 
I didn't um I didn't buy in right away. I wasn't a hundred percent Japanese Christian. Whoa. And so <laughs> exactly. Um I mean, I knew him, I knew of him and everything, but I wasn't 100% sold out for Jesus. Now, granted, folks, I, I grew up in the, in the Jesus freak era, okay? You know, the, you know, the free love and all that stuff. I never got into that stuff, but my thing was, I kept hearing about Jesus, and I kept hearing about, you know, and, and uh, I lived up in Santa Barbara, so out at uh, UCSB, you know, in the 60s and 70s, they had all the hippies out there and everything, so I used to go hang out out there and and uh, um, there's a, a record store out there where the guy was the guy was super cool. The records were dirt cheap. And uh, so I go out and buy records from him and, and hang out with him. And, and it was kind of fun because it was I learned from a different standpoint. I didn't have a guy in a suit and tie yelling at me about the things that I'd done wrong. They were telling me about the love of Jesus. And um, how do you pronounce your name, Nate? Uh, I phonetically, if I spell it, it would be like D A Y N A, day na, Dana, and um, that's where I first started learning. This was when I was uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, between my sophomore and junior year in high school. I'm out there hanging out. It was before that I was, but I actually started to really take a you know, take a shine to it. I mean, you know, it was like that guy that's teaching at the church, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just not picking up what he's putting down. I wasn't getting it. But what these guys were telling me, we're sitting around in, you know, in these apartments and talking and just kind of shooting the breeze and, and they're talking about the love of Jesus. And I was like, that's the guy I want to get to know. He's like all these, these hippies out here, man. They're like just laid back and cool and, and just, you know, grooving. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's the guy I want to get to know. And I did for a while. And then just like the seed that, that, that gets choked out by the thorns, life kind of ran over the top of me. You know, and things happen. And then I realized that the one thing that was missing, that was fun back then, but now it's not. Why? Well, because I didn't have that love of Jesus. Okay? This is Dan. Exactly. And that's where mine comes from, is Dan. Um, my mom was, it was, uh, my dad is pure blood Danish. My mom is pure blood Mexican. And in, in uh, I was told that um, in the Spanish language, somehow it means child of mourning. And I couldn't figure out if, you know, she was like, okay, look, it's two o'clock in the morning. So we're going to have a baby. Or was it because of, of mourning as in like mourning the loss of somebody, you know, and, and, and figuring out whether or not, it, you know, I was a disappointment to him. And I could never, somebody, I, I, I'd love to find the person that told me it meant that it was a child of mourning because I'd, I'd stuff a sock in their mouth before they could say anything. Because I carried that for many years. You know, am I a disappointment to my parents? Or is it, is it because it was, you know, first thing in the morning that I was born? But uh, Jesus, the whole thing, the whole dying on the cross, nails in the hands, thorns on the head, spear in the side, all of that is his physical manifestation way of showing that he actually took our sin. Okay? He took our sin for us. Right? The crown of thorns. Because the world, we were supposed to work, the, the, the ground would produce thorns. You guys want to see thorns? I got, I got star thistle in my backyard. That, that stuff is nasty. You know, oh, it's nice when it's growing up. Oh, it's green and it's got yellow flowers and it's all nice. And then the branches, all the leaves will fall out. You get these thistles, these thorns. 
and I'll take Echo down. We'll go down and play in the lower property sometimes. And, and I have to spend a whole summer digging those things out. You don't just cut them off. You don't poison them. You dig them out. Okay. I had a buddy who used to pour gas on them and burn them. I don't know if that worked or not, but I dig them out because I don't want them down there because I've had to sit him. I've had to actually lay him down and pull those thorns out of his paws. And I think about that. And I think about Jesus with that crown of thorns on his head. But nobody pulled the thorns out of him. You know? Yep. So, Annette, what the lashings from atrocious whips. Yes. Yeah, they... Um, it depends on which where you where you read what you what you learn um it was either whips or um one of the things that that i i've looked back talked to you know people who study this and and look back in time and um the weapons that they had <sighs> yep warming up in the garage the weapons that they had what they would use was actually what we now call a cat of nine tails. Um, it is a handle. And then on that handle, they take strips of leather, different lengths, you know, thin strips of leather. And then um, you um, take it and they roll it in tree sap. Okay. And, and they take the tree sap, they get it all warmed up, they get it all sticky, and then they roll it through. Uh, pottery shards okay later on they were they would use broken glass okay um if they really didn't want to go that far they would just use the the leather straps and a person who knew how to use those was an artist at what he did okay he could literally literally just strip a man of his skin um and they would, they would, you know, do that, you know, sometimes they maybe roll it in sand instead of in, in the shards because it would still tear the skin. So that's what he went through. Um, for us, imagine that. Imagine somebody loving you and so much that they would do that for you. Do that for me. Right? Willing to take that, that beating, right? Um, the only thing nowadays that I can think that's even close to it is, uh, um, is like a secret service agent. Part of their thing when they become a secret service agent is they, have, they, they swear that they will take a bullet for their protectee. Whether it's it's the president or the vice president or um, the you know the, the the first lady or you know whatever whoever it is that they are to protect that they will in all instances to the best of their ability if there is a gun involved that they will take the bullet instead of the person they're protecting and they know that they're going to do it they know that they could die. Jesus came knowing he was meant to die. So, um, he's taking our judgment. Um, God said that, that all have fallen short of the glory of God and, and, um, he also says that the wages of sin is death. So basically, when I sin, I just add another charge onto my file of death. What I do brings death. If I change my ways, if I clean my act up, if I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, doing what is correct in 
what God wants, then I stop tipping that scale that way. When I accept Jesus, He takes my sins from me. He stands in the gap, if you will. So, um, kind of started off track this morning talking about Guy and his wife. And um, you know, we need to keep them in prayer. We need to keep all of those guys that are in prison in prayer. I, I don't care what you think about what they did. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is what is right. What needs to be done that is correct. Um, my buddy that I talk about down in Florida that, that um, the, you know, all the things that he does, he comes out with t-shirts every once in a while. And the last one that he came out with, I just saw this week, it's, all it says on it is just do what is right. We all need to, to keep that in our minds. We need to do what's right. Even if it hurts somebody. Even if you're with somebody and you, and you see them, you know, maybe you're at a restaurant and you're standing there and, and the person that the, the cashier is like, you know, ringing the thing up and they're doing something and then they have to step away for a second and they forget that they left the, the, the cash drawer open. And you see your friend grab some money out of there. Okay. You've got to do what's right. You saw that for a reason. You saw that because you have an effect on that person's life. You need to go to that person. And you need to tell them, hey, I saw what you did. You can't hide it. You need to take that and give it back. You need to confess that you were the one that stole it. You need to get, because that person over there is going to pay the price now. Because of your greed or you wanting to steal that money, that person over there will now probably be fired because her drawer does not come out right at the end of the night. Because you got greedy and you stole the money. Just because you don't want to get off of your lazy butt and go get a job. So you got one of two choices. I walk over there and tell her, and our friendship is done. Or you walk over there and tell them, and you give them that money back, and I support you. I'll be here. I'll do what I can for you. But you got to make your choice what you're going to do. In life, that's the way we have to be. We have to live our lives that way. We have to make sure that, that um, we do what's right when nobody else is around. Nobody's there to watch. Nobody's there to see what we're doing. It may be 2 o'clock in the morning, and, and you may be the only one there at a store or, or in a mini mart or whatever. You're working late and, and, and you know, there's, there's, you know, money or whatever, you know, what, uh, food that you could take and eat and whatever. The honorable thing is to do the right thing when nobody else is around, when nobody else is there, even anywhere near you to see it, to hear about it, to know about it. That is what is right. That is what is true. That's what's honorable. Because that is what God would have us do. To do the right thing no matter what anybody else says. Where two, two or more are gathered there in his name. Yeah, you were exactly Naomi. Um, so, and she's right. So, um, folks, if you would, please, let's, uh, we're going to go ahead and close up. Um, I'm going to pray, uh, for, um, I want to make sure I get her name right. Um, and it should pop up. Yep. There it is. Uh, his name is, his name is Guy and his wife's name is Nicole Refit. Okay. Um, oop. That's my alarm. Sorry about that. Um, 
let's keep them in prayer okay um and a lot i mean i know you guys all have things going on in your life and there's prayer needed all over the place i'm i get messages from people and and, and emails and i keep adding them to my prayer book folks you don't have to assume a certain position to pray you do not have to be in a certain place to pray okay you can you can prayer on the to you can pray on the toilet you can pray in the shower you can pray if you're out walking the dog you can pray out pray if you're out cleaning up weeds you can you can um you can pray at any time anywhere because god was there is there and will be there and and you know, it says in the Bible that we should pray unceasingly. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if we break it down, ceasing means to stop, right? There's an order where you can, you can have an order issue. It's a cease and desist order. That means stop and quit doing what it is you're doing. Well, God says unceasingly. Always praying. Because God will hear us. And... It's even better when, you, when you're praying with, with friends or maybe you've got a couple of people that you're praying with. Here, when we pray here, when we pray out every morning, okay? I am the shorts wonder. Uh, don't have one for you. Sorry. Um, we need to... to Pray just not for them, but we need to pray also for those that prosecute them, those that come after them, trying to um, tear down what they're doing. Because a lot of times, folks, these people are being driven by something that we don't see, we can't see, we don't know what it is. Okay? Whatever is driving them is where the problem lies and we need to pray that 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 has power over them release it that their their faith becomes strong in the lord in jesus and um their life changes so let me get you guys prayed up for the day, for this weekend. Um, we won't be here tomorrow like normal. Uh, Sundays we're off. That's the times that I, I urge you, um, unless, unless you are, um, if you are uh, Jewish, if you, you know, today is your Sabbath, spend the time with the Lord today uh, or, and family tomorrow. Um, you know, if you don't celebrate the Sabbath today, you celebrate tomorrow. Um, spend that time with your family. Go to church, pray, you know, um, teach the little ones. Spend the time to grow with the family. Because pro I promise you, I just as sure as I'm standing here, you're going to get to where I am and you're going to look back and go, my gosh, what did I do with that time with my kids? It's all gone. My kids are all grown. They're, they're adults. So, and uh, so. Spend that time with them tomorrow, okay? Father God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord God, for your grace and for your love. I thank you for who you are in my life. I thank you, Father God, that you have shown me a path that may not be easy, but you have already traveled it. You have shown me the way. And in that, Father God, that even though the trials will be there, that you will be there to help me. I pray for, uh, for Guy and, and his wife, and the Refit's father. I just, to be promised something, to be given, shown where the end of the tunnel is, to be shown where it's over, where he doesn't have to worry anymore about 
anything. He'll be released from prison. He will be set free to be promised that. And yet to have a man, I would be willing to, I would be willing to bet not even a man of God, just a man, change the rules of the game, Father God, is wrong. So not only do I pray for Guy and his stability there in prison, for what he's doing, Father God, um, for who he is in your life, or you are in his life, that you would bless him, that all that he's going to do, Father God, he sees that, and he embraces it with you, Father. And for Nicole, and, and knowing that her husband, he didn't do anything wrong. And, and you know, even at the outstretch, at the very widest point, Father God, maybe, okay, so maybe you needed a slap on the wrist and, and then, you know, sent home. But no, none of this, none of these people. This is a kangaroo court, Father God, in, in, there's a reason why you're exposing all of this, why all of this is happening. I pray that before it ruins one more life, Father God, that you would intervene. You would bless these men and women and to um, help them straighten out. And I, when I say that, Father, I mean the courts. I mean, I mean the DOJ. I'm talking about those, Father God, that are doing the prosecuting, that are, are running wild like children with scissors, Father God, that just don't care about the outcome. Make them stop, Father. Put your wall between them and us and protect your people. I know, Father God, that we have sinned. I know that this country has sinned. I know that, that in your view, Father God, that uh, we're not where we're supposed to be. But that's why we're here, Father. That's why those who have come to hear your word, to hear about you this morning, and who hopefully will come back on Monday and, and through the week, Father. We, no, forgive me, Father. I, I confess my sins to you. I confess what I have done, Father God, the things that I have done. And I know, Father God, that you forgive me for my sins. And I thank you for that. And I ask you, Lord God, to please protect not just myself, not just my family, but all of my friends and my family that are here right now, Father, that are listening, that are praying. Keep them safe. Put your hands upon them. Bless them, Father God, I beg you. Watch over them in all that they do, Lord God, today. Spending time with family, doing chores, that they would raise their voices to you, Father God, in prayer and in praise that you would show them, Father God, the very next objective you have for them. Maybe it's removing the sin from their life. Maybe it's going from the boulders down to the rocks, down to the pebbles, and down to the sand. Each step, Father God, you're showing them the really tiny things in correcting how they live, what they're doing. Because I know that when you've shown this to me, Father God, it makes a huge difference in my life. That as I slowly start to eradicate anything that is against you, that is in my life, that my life becomes lighter. My load is lighter. I pray that for all of my family here. Those who are listening now, those who will listen later. I pray for the healing, Father God, for, uh, for Pamela, for Naomi, for Lori. Um, there's so many more, Father God. I, I've, I've got a book. I keep a log, Father God. I, I know what these people are praying for. I pray that you would heal them, Father God, their health and their family. I thank you, Father God, for this time. I give you all the glory and the honor. I pray in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. All right, folks. Um, yeah, for those of you that are on YouTube, 
um, check in the community place. Uh, you should find that link also. And then also, um, if you're on YouTube, uh, you should see it down under, down at the bottom in the comments. I posted it down there also. Uh, so it'll be there and I'll be doing that. I don't know if I have to do it every morning. We'll find out, but, um, hopefully it'll be there every single morning for you. Okay. So, um, I appreciate y'all being here. We'll be back on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Um, what do we get into next week? Where are we going next week? Oh. Next week, we start with real faith. We only have two weeks left in this, folks. We only have two weeks left. Week 23 and then week 24. And we're done. So Monday is going to be real faith. And, and that's going to be next week. Monday is going to be faith. You By faith, you are saved. By faith, we are saved. Faith in Jesus, we are saved. So, um, I pray that the Lord would keep you and bless you all. That his light would shine upon you and around you. That his blessings would overflow in your life. That as he points things out that you listen. You hear what it is he has to say. Um, that your words would become softer. Your, your hearts would be gentle. Um, there, is, there is a time to be hard. There is a time to be that warrior. Um, yes, we are, Annette. Um, I'm looking at two different books right now. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to get them out this afternoon and take a look at them again. And um, I'm not sure which way we're, which one I want to use first, but we, yeah, we're going to continue. And then, um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I just I just hope that you guys are, are, are getting it because um, God loves us. God loves you. And, and he doesn't want to see us go through what we're going through. The times right now, the trials that we're going through, okay, are, are hard at best. Yeah, are out of control court system absolutely um oh yeah no i'm pamela i am here or annette excuse me i'm here for i'm i'm here until god takes me home or until he says that my time here is done so i'll be here every monday through saturday and um, unless there's something come up that i can't make it uh and then um well, next Saturday, the 20th, Naomi, next Saturday is uh, Meet Mama, right? I believe, down south. Um, so, um, I don't know what's going to happen there. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, folks, please um, stay in prayer. Keep each other in prayer, pray for each other. Uh, when you see somebody that, that says, hey, I need prayer for whatever, keep that person in prayer. Um, you don't have, to, you don't have to, to log and keep every single person. Um, the ones that, that, that hit your heart, the ones that maybe you've been through that, maybe you've been down that road and, and um, you know what they're going through. Um, hey, Muhammad, good. And um, so keep him in prayer. For all of my veterans, brothers and sisters, to all of the active duty personnel, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National Guard, Coast Guard, uh, to all of the Gold Star and Blue Star families, 
for you. Please don't stop. Don't give up. Don't, don't ever give up. Because God's not done with you yet. If you wake up in the morning, that means that God still has a plan for your life. For all of the firemen, policemen, emergency responders, um, tactical teams, search and rescue teams, emergency medical teams, uh, life flight, you also don't, don't give up. Don't stop. Just one more day. Exactly, Naomi. Just one more day. Please. Because as long as you see the next sunrise, that means that God has a plan for you. God is not through with you yet. So don't you dare give up on yourself yet. Because if God's not through with you, then there's nothing that you can't achieve. It may feel like it's hard. It may feel like it's uphill all the time. You're fighting constantly. It's just making you a little bit stronger every day. There will come times when you need to rest. You need to stop. But that's not license to give up. Don't ever do that. You don't know whose life you have affected. You don't know whose life you have made a change in. So you don't have the right to deny them that experience of meeting you, of you changing their life. So, just one more day, please. One more day. KFG. And yes, I did change the meaning of that, folks. That means keep finding God. Thanks to one of our brothers here who pointed that out to me. Um, that was a throwback when I was in active duty in the military. The KFG stands for something else. But I liked his definition better. Keep finding God. KFG. I love you guys very much. I will talk to you Monday morning. Have a very blessed Saturday and Sunday. Go with God because I know he goes with you. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.